Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our weekly mentoring hour. Before we could uh, start uh, this session, I would request one of us to lead us in prayer. Can I request Sid to lead us in prayer? Let's pray. Father, we come to the throne of grace. Thank you as you have given us this time, Lord. As we have learned in APC Bible College, Lord, whatever we have learned, Lord, thank you for the word. Thank you for this opportunity you have given us. And whatever learning we have got here, Lord, whatever the experiences we have got here, let it should be used for the kingdom expansion and for your glory, Lord. All glory to be given, Lord. Let we should be humbled in your in your presence, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sid. So we keep this time open to all to ask questions, share thoughts, discuss or clarify on any topics that is in your mind. We keep the session open. You can post it on the chat or unmute and ask question. Said Paul, anyone, Apni Aradna, if you'll have any questions, please feel free to ask or you can post it on the chat. Hello. Yes. Hi, brother. Please go ahead. Yeah, may I have a question? Yes, please. Uh, that concerns, uh, concerns Brother Paul, your voice is breaking. Would you like to type your question on the chat? I guess there's some problem with the network. My your voice is I'll not clear. Can you please post your question on the chat? Life. Okay, in the meanwhile, any others like Sid, Aradna, Apni, you all have any questions? You all can unmute and ask or post it on the chat. Looks like there's some network problem with. Okay, please go ahead, John. Okay, we believe Jesus took a curse at the cross. Do we need a special prayer to enforce the victory over curse or? It is broken and have no access as we believe in Jesus. What is our understanding about curse breaking special prayer? Is there any of our faculty who would like to take up this question? Um, uh, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Sorry, good morning, Diana. Good morning, Sean. Um, uh, just a quick thoughts on that. Um, so we have to look at it from two perspectives. One is whatever has been provided through the cross has to be actively appropriated. That means uh, just because you know Jesus did it on the cross doesn't mean it automatically happens in everyone's life. And even for the believer, we actively appropriate. So there's that aspect of it. So the curse is broken. The blood has redeemed us. But we actively appropriate it in our walk of faith, through faith and uh, believing God. So that's one side to it. 
So the answer is yes. You know, we do pray. We do receive by faith. We do uh, declare our freedom from every form of curse. On the other hand, uh, we must not overemphasize the evil, <clears throat> which is what is the problem in many, many circles. You know, um, there's a lot of emphasis on, uh, you know, curses on the blood in the bloodline and generational curses, and you know, uh, while 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 we understand the reality of it, we want we don't want to keep the emphasis on the negative. Uh, we want to keep the emphasis on that the work has been completed and we have to appropriate it by faith. And it's a it's a simple thing. Uh, you know, we don't want to make it so complicated. For instance, you know, the way people complicate this whole thing is by saying, okay, uh, you need to go back to, you know, finding out what happened to you, you know, your great grandfather and this and that, you know, so you like the digging up in into the family tree. Another way people complicate it is by trying to dig up into the childhood of, you know, of the person, oh, when you were three years old, this and this happened, and then they trace that back, you know, so... Uh, these are, you know, uh, activities which seem spiritual, but they unnecessarily complicate the whole matter. So, I, so uh, I, I, in response to your question, I would say yes, we have to actively appropriate everything what, that Christ has provided for us by faith, including our freedom from every form of bondage and so on. But let's keep it simple. Christ did the work. We receive it by faith. Let's not, you know, try to complicate it by doing a lot of things. If the Lord re specifically reveals something that, you know, a person needs to deal with, then definitely uh, we, <clears throat> we respond to what the Holy Spirit says and go with it. But other than that, we, you know, we don't make charts and draw diagrams and trees and telling people to trace back four generations and those kinds of things we don't do because I think those are just human efforts. Um, yeah. Yes, Pastor, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Pastor, then you're on mute. I'm sorry. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, John, thank you for letting us know that you answered your question. And we have another question from Paul. What are some of the reasons why some of the prophecies do not come in to fulfillment? Uh, yeah, Pastor Nancy or Pastor Paul can take up this question, please. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Pastor Diana, and thank you, Paul, for this question. Um, uh, why do some? What is the reasons why some of the prophecies do not come into fulfillment? So, um, Paul, we need to understand that uh, though unsaid, uh, prophecies also uh, tend to be conditional. Okay. Uh, now, uh, with regard to what God has, uh, you know, th there are certain things in Scripture uh, that don't change for example we were promised that god would send us a redeemer and jesus came he uh you know took our sins and then we have prophecies about you know him coming back so there are certain um there are certain promises of god that do not change but otherwise you know uh, especially things that have to do with personal uh, prophecies they are conditional so uh though things are spoken over our lives that you know certain things will happen, we have to also cooperate with our obedience. When we don't, uh, it is possible that the prophecies don't come to pass. So our cooperation is required. Uh, the uh, other thing that I would say is uh, to pray through the prophecies because um, we see Paul instructed Timothy to do that, to uh, wage a good warfare with the prophecies that were made over his life. So prayer also plays a part. So when we hear a word spoken over our lives, uh, we, we must start praying it through. So that is another thing that I would say. So one is obedience. Uh, if we uh, are not obedient to that word, then you know it may not come to pass. And also, the second thing would be prayer. If we don't engage in prayer for that word that has been spoken over our lives, um, again, it may not come to pass. So, uh, with these two points, I think I will uh, stop. 
uh, co my colleagues could please add. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Any any other faculty would like to add to it? Uh, yes, uh, Diana, I would like to add one point. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the point that I'd like to add is about preparation. So uh, there will be times when uh, you know any one of us could get a prophecy. So for example, if um, you know somebody prophesies over us uh, saying uh, you're going to be a great evangelist or a pastor, and uh, there is after after we receive that prophecy uh, there has to be preparation also which is a practical aspect of you know uh, spending time in the word reading the word uh, meditating on the word because we know that if if i have to be a pastor or an evangelist i need to be uh, equipped in the word and so that whole practical aspect of spending time reading the word extra time of uh, you know studying the word the word of God. Uh, so I just like to add that point, right, uh, of the practical preparation, whether it is pastor, evangelist, or even if it's a worship leader, uh, if somebody has prophesied, you're going to be a worship leader, there needs to be a practice uh, or a preparation uh, for you to get to that place. And uh, uh, yes, so preparation is something that uh, that we all have to do after we receive a prophecy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Paul. Uh, thank anyone? you. Thank you. Okay, that answered your question. Okay, thank you. We also have another question from Sid Kenu. I want to know that like a new religion has been coming into existence called the religion of Abraham combination of Jews, Christians and Muslims believe to end the fight and to follow the footsteps of Abraham. As we all are offering of him, is it from Satan or is it evil? Do we Pentecostal need to be away from it? What are our views on it? Please explain. Pastor, you would like to answer this question, Pastor? Um, sure. Um, I personally uh, have not uh, heard or looked into this religion of Abraham, but I guess I can understand what it is because uh, uh, obviously Jews, Christians, and uh, Muslims all trace their spiritual ancestry through Abraham. So it's probably just an attempt to do that. But I think the answer is pretty straightforward. You know, uh, in Galatians chapter 1, also in Second Corinthians chapter 10, uh, Paul, the apostle, states very clearly that if anyone comes proclaiming another gospel, you know, something that's different from the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, we are to avoid that that's not from God. So the answer is, yeah, we, we stay away from it uh, because definitely we know that uh, you know what, what what God is doing and what we are called to believe is in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Sid, did that answer your question? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Sid. Uh, is there anyone? I mean, you all can post your questions or you can unmute and ask. Abni, Kirin. It can be pertaining to your subject or to the course that you have taken or you have any doubt, clarification, please feel free. Okay, I have a very small question. When we read Psalms, we often read this word wicked in it. So the wicked. So uh, 
in how do we understand this word wicked like who does bible refer to when it says wicked shall wicked so what i am uh, asking is about like is it talking of believers and believers or uh, those people who are actually doing wicked works but there are unbelievers who are not uh, into any kind of wickedness so uh, i'm just uh, confused as to who does uh, the psalmist refer to when he says the word wicked is there any of our faculty who would like to take up this question pastor jakes would you like to answer this question um yeah um, yeah then so you, um sir. yeah so when when the bible says wicked when it refer, when the psalm particularly in the psalms um, uh, i mean I'm, i'm assuming it's it's referring to those who are um, uh you know not walking the path of righteousness because psalm 1 itself um, uh, declares that um you know uh, blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly nor in the path of sinners nor in the seat of the scornful but his delight is in the law of the lord so someone who um who is away from the law of the lord away from the path of righteousness and uh, who is also indulging in acts of un- uh, unrighteousness um yeah i would say um because this is of course before the cross um and so you know um, yeah so that is my understanding that um, a person who's referred to as wicked is um, uh, is not someone who uh, is someone who is not walking the path of righteousness as given in the law of the lord yeah thank you yeah. thank you thank you pastor agni did that answer your question Uh, any other faculty would like to add to it thank you thank you pastor thank you abney um yeah we we'll look forward for any other questions from our students any of our faculty also if there's any question that you would like to ask or share your thoughts from your class please feel free to share Uh, yes pastor i think i have a question the question that came up uh, a couple of weeks before um so uh, so the course on marriage christian marriage and family yes, and uh, one of the students brought up a question on whether surrogacy uh is uh, biblical uh and uh, yeah so i i just wanted to maybe understand it better from probably the other pastors also is surrogacy biblical any of our faculty or pastor would you like to take up this question um so sure. okay, now um, there are many there are many things the bible uh, doesn't speak on uh, many many things uh for ex- for example and this this might be a silly example but the bible doesn't talk about cigarettes so you know uh, the bible is silent on the subject of cigarettes so should we smoke cigarettes or should we not smoke cigarettes you know uh, it's a silly example but uh, so how do we come to a conclusion well we just uh, keep in mind uh, some other you know both uh, other sc- scriptural guidelines plus just basic general guidelines so you know what what would be the other relevant things the bible does say that the things that, that the bible does say on this matter well the bible says our body is a temple of god then the general guideline is okay what does cigarette smoking do for you well it it actually destroys our body so then we arrive at a conclusion though the bible does not speak on the subject based on you know these two 
perspectives, we arrive at a conclusion. And so, you know, we take that same approach to many things where the Bible doesn't speak directly on, you know. Uh, so like uh, uh, surrogacy, there's so many other areas like genetic engineering, uh, just this huge, huge, huge areas where the Bible is silent on, but then we arrive at a conclusion on the same thing. You know, is there anything else that we could see in scripture uh, to bring light that is relevant to this particular topic? And secondly is, you know, is it in any way harmful, just from a natural perspective, is it in any way harmful, dangerous, anyway? So, uh, and, and then we present our findings and obviously in such matters, we always say, in my opinion, because we can't use a particular chapter and verse to arrive at that conclusion. Right. So there are believers who believe that you can still smoke cigarettes and make it to heaven, just that you'll get there a little sooner than the others. So, you know, so uh, uh, yeah, so that's their perspective. Yeah. So in this same, in, even in so in all matters, when we are you know arriving at an answer by using these two approaches, we we qualified by saying, in my opinion, that's this is my understanding of it. So you know, so even in a matter like surrogacy, we would say, look. In our opinion, we don't find anything wrong with it uh, because um, uh, there is nothing that the Bible, we can think of in the Bible that's speaking against it scripturally. And then from a natural standpoint, well, you, you know, uh, somebody's helping a couple have a child uh, for whatever reason they themselves are not able to have. So, you know, we don't see any you know sin in that, doing that. So again, this is just an opinion that we arrive at based on you know, taking this approach. Um, uh, then, you know, so yeah, I think I would, you know, that's how I would look, you know, respond to that. And we'd apply that same framework of thinking to a lot of other areas where there is no, you know, uh, chapter and verse that we could quote. Is that okay? Uh, should we have? Yeah, that, that's fine, Pastor. I think uh, part of the question was because there are different kinds of uh, uh, surrogacy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and so when it involves um, the seed of a surrogate uh, uh, person, a mother, or, or, or a, yeah, a surrogate mother, would that be acceptable? So there is gestational surrogacy where the seed of the actual parents are taken and mm -hmm. put into the surrogate mother. So, you know, th there was a question there also on uh, it, would that be acceptable when it's not the seed of the original parent mm -hmm. and it's the seed of a surrogate mother? Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, this is just my personal opinion. I don't see anything sinful in that. And I don't see anything wrong in that. You know, it's just, I mean, if you just extrapolated you know uh, birthing is just a, a small part of a person's life it's a nine month process but think about adoption mm -hmm. where parents adopt a child and that's real parenting where they are taking care of the child or the baby for the entirety of their life that's even a bigger uh, step than you know uh, carrying a baby in the womb for nine months and we don't find anything, you know, actually we bless adoption. The Bible blesses adoption. And that's real parenting. So if I just uh, work backwards from that, uh, then I can say, hey, there's nothing wrong with this. You know, uh, we're not doing anything sinful at all. That's that's my thought process on it. Sure. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Diana. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. And thank you, Pastor. Uh, our classes from Mikia that would be from August 2022 onwards. Uh, yeah, Pastor Ramal Sunday groaning in prayer. Does the believer groan in prayer or? Does the Holy Spirit groan in prayer? Um, can I request any of our faculty to take up this question? Or any of us? Thank 
Yeah, I think it's uh, yeah. uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, right? So the, um, yeah, let me just read that verse. The Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered, which means that uh, he enables us to move into that place of intense prayer and uh, with words uh, and utterances, he inspires us. And uh, as human beings, of course, we, we speak it out or we pray that out. So it, it is both. Um, the believer uh, groans in prayer as inspired by the Spirit of God, as led by the Spirit of God. Yeah. Yeah, Pastor, I think that's the... That would be my response. Am I right? Or <laughs> okay, I think that was a that was a quiz for <laughs> for faculty. <laughs> okay. No, I just, I just asked because somebody sent one email. You know, like after the sermon. I see. They, were, they came up with these questions, and like another question that that same person asked was. Um, it says uh, groanings which cannot be uttered. So that means these are very silent. You can't hear it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that was the other part of it. Right. So, uh, so then I then I kind of responded saying, uh, you know, the the context is, um, you know, from Romans eight twenty two, twenty three, and twenty six. All three verses use the phrase groaning. Groanings. And, yeah. and uh, verse twenty two specifically says groanings with labor pains. So, uh, so I just respond saying, so when a woman is in labor, is the groaning silent or is it loud? <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so, so then uh, when it says it cannot be uttered, it simply means it's inarticulate speech. It means it's not a uh, normal speech, you know. It's groanings that come out in a very different way than just our uh, conversational uh, articulation of uh, thoughts, you know. So yeah, I, I just asked because this was the same as asked about three, four questions on that. So right. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, we have a question from Sid. Okay. Sid's cousin is a SI in Delhi police and he is afraid of shooting a criminal in the encounter. You also got a notice from a senior asking why you are not using your weapon. Uh, he says, what should I say to him? He is stuck between his duty and religion. Any of our faculty would like to take up this question, please? Pastor, would you like to take this question, Pastor? Take up this question. Uh, sure. Yeah. So, um, you know, if one is, uh, I, I think a passage that we could use is uh, Romans, the 13th chapter, uh, verses 1 to about 10 or so. Uh, but it does talk about, you know, uh, uh, civil authorities and how they, uh, they exercise their powers to uh, sub promote what is good and uh, root out what is evil. So uh, obviously these, uh, the, the civil authorities have to exercise their um, authority. It's part of them, you know, doing what they're supposed to do. And they're appointed by God, Romans 13 says. So you can let him know that, hey, whatever he's called to do, uh, it's actually uh the work of god you know it's it's ministry he's a minister of god just as much as a pastor who preaches or a uh, you know any other minister of god so that's his, his his responsibility and it's it's a it's a work of god and of course it has to be done with within the framework of the law with fairness and justice and what the law permits but as long as he's carrying out his duties in the framework of the law he's doing right. So you could use Romans 13, verse 1 through 10. Thank you, Pastor. So did that answer your question? You can share this with Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Sid. 
Is there any other question? Like um, yeah, yeah, then I, yes, I just wanted to um, like uh, ask Pastor actually uh, on the light in the light of the same um, uh, response. Like, so it's the the bigger picture is like, can a Christian serve in the army? And um, you know, uh, probably I, I guess the dis dif difference is between uh, like a murder and uh, maybe a carrying out a like carrying out a judicial justice or you know um, like wielding a weapon for protection or to bring in law and order so there's a difference uh, i guess between that um uh, right pastor like uh, right right we, yeah. yeah we can ex yeah okay. yeah so yeah so you know we know the bible says like in the, one of the 10 commandments is thou shall not kill but of course it, it's understood in the context the same god who said thou shall not kill in uh, Exodus 20, in many other places, he does tell the people, go and kill, go and kill. So so there's a context to thou shall not kill and go and kill, right? So, uh, and I'm just looking at the Old Testament itself. So obviously that killing is, uh, uh, thou shall not kill is when you're doing something wrong, uh, murder, yeah, like you said. But then when somebody is in the armed forces or in, 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 in any form of security where uh, you know at some point they may have to resort to you know and uh, the taking of a human life but it's done within the context of the law of the land uh, that is fair and just that's executing justice that's executing righteousness uh, and uh, yeah so that's not uh, a violation of god's law um, right, Pastor. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Is there any other question? Any questions? Okay. Uh, we have a question from Sister Diner. I hear some people say that the Ten Commandments is not relevant today. That Jesus had given us a new commandment. How does one respond to that in its import, most simplest way? Any of our pastors would like to take up this question? I think, Diana, the, the most yes, simplest way is uh, Romans 13, 8. Uh, it says, you know, he who loves another has fulfilled the law. So if you basically, if you walk in love, you've kept the whole law. That's it. So uh, that's Romans 13, 8. You know, of course, and we find many other scriptures uh, that reiterate the same thing. Um, that... Um, Jesus gave us this commandment to love, love God and love people. And if we walk in love the way God wants us to, we keep all the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. I uh, hope that answered your question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Diana. Is there any other question? Before we could end with our session. Is there any other question? Aradhana, Monica, Avni, any questions? Kiran? I think it's okay. We could. Wrap up in prayer, Dan, if there are no questions. Sure, 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 Pastor. So um, before we could uh, wrap up with this uh, session today, I just want to keep all of us updated that um, this would be the last mentoring hour for fall 2021. And thank you, each one of you all, for participating week after week. And we will resume our mentoring hour and also the supernatural 
supernatural hour will be last for tomorrow and mentoring hour today and we will resume our mentoring hour in spring 2022 on thursday jan 13th okay so we will end the session with a word of prayer dear god we thank you for this time thank you father for giving this time week after week and be able to come in your presence and clarify our doubts and learn from it oh father thank you lord for the faculties that here has been a blessing to each one of us that they're able to impart from your wisdom from your knowledge of oh father and we also bless each and every student who join week after week lord thank you father that you are teaching us through your word and clarifying all our doubts and you're equipping us even in this time of oh father thank you lord jesus lord we surrender ourselves and this day in your hand in jesus name we pray amen amen thank you so much for joining in god bless see you all tomorrow at the supernatural hour thank you everyone Thanks. thank you thank you everyone god bless thank you thank you